So Qualcomm announced the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 not too long ago, and soon we're going to be seeing more devices on the market that's going to be rocking this latest flagship uh, SoC. So for example, right in front of us today, we have the iQ uh, 12, which is the latest flagship device from these guys, and it's in partnership with BMW Motorsports, as you can see on the box in front of us right here. This is in the legendary uh, color, so it's white, and it's got all the branding all around it. We'll go through the devices, device in terms of the design in a second. But just to get things out of the way, the box itself, uh, I've already opened this one, so as you can tell, uh, I've been using it. And you, you get inside of the box a silicon case, which allows you to basically protect your device so this can remain pristine and it'll just look good for a long period of time and protects the phone in general from drops and all that kind of stuff. Elsewhere inside of the box, we get this uh, card that comes in every iQ BMW M Sport version. Uh, so you get this uh, car in front of it. So. Uh, Look at the picture, looks really cool. I'm not even actually sure what M car this is, M2, M4, I don't know, uh, on top of my head. But yeah, so you do get this card that comes with it. I don't know what you're meant to do with this, maybe just hang it up somewhere or whatever, but you do get this in the box, so do with that what you will. And then underneath that, we have our SIM ejector tool. Just take that out. So that's the SIM ejector tool right there. Looks pretty, pretty simple. It would have been nice if the ejector tool was some sort of BMW sort of cutout or logo or something. Something that you can actually keep and look at it as a souvenir of some sort. And then we get the quick start guide and warranty card information in the box as well, as always. And then we get our USB uh, cable for charging and data transfer. This is a USB-C to USB-C cable, and it's just uh, decent length. And again, this doesn't come with any special branding. It would have been nice if this was some sort of like braided cable that's in the M Sport colors of uh, black, red, and blue. That would have been really cool to have. So IQ, if you're listening, take note. And then we get this 120 watt charging brick in the box, three pin for the UK, USB-C port on top of there. So yeah, you get everything you need in a box to basically get started. So here's the device itself, as you can see. So they call this color the legend color. So it's basically white and it's got a slightly curvature on the edges on the back, which is cool. Makes it nice and comfortable to hold in hand. Got the flash there on the right and our camera there, which has 100 times telelens. So this is a triple camera setup. So we have 50 megapixel uh, sensor in there. We have a 50 megapixel uh, ultra wide and 64 megapixel periscope telephoto camera uh, on there as well. The aperture, we're looking at f 1.68 uh, for the main camera, then f 2.0 for the uh, next one. So this is the ultra wide and f 2.57 for the 64 megapixel uh, telelens and it's got OIS uh, built into it as well. On the front, we get a 16 megapixel uh, shooter on the front at f 2.45. So hopefully that will do a great job. Looking on the side, we have a flat edge design on this, which is cool. It's got this nice chrome finishing, which will attract a lot of fingerprint, but if you put it in the case, uh, you'll be completely fine. Up top, we have what looks like your microphone, speaker, and maybe IR blaster up top there. And then if you look right at the bottom, we have a USB-C port, a speaker grill there, and the SIM card tray. And then we have these curved edges as well, right at the bottom there, as you can see. And then if we look on the other side, we have a volume rocker and a power button situated on the right side of the device. The camera array is very big, as you can see, so it kind of sticks out a little bit there, and it's very prominent on the back. We have these uh, subtle BMW partnership brand in there with IQ just on the bottom there, which looks cool. So yeah, it's, it's a nice device. It feels nice in hand to hold as well. There's no problems there. Um, I love the look and feel of it. It feels very, very premium. This is 6.78 inch device. Uh, so if we just unlock this, so you do get fingerprint sensor, which uh, operates very quickly and works very good as well. So every time you press it, double tap, press that, it just works very, very well. It also has face ID unlock as well. And as you can see again, just the front facing camera uh, up there. This is 2800 by 1260 AMOLED display, and you're looking at refresh rates of up to 144 hertz of refresh on here. So this should do really well for those gamers out there who like to game on something that performs really well. It's near bezel-less, so you can see around it, you can hardly see any bezels at all. So this is pretty much a very premium product, and it's working that latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. And those that need a refresher on what the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is all about, it's much better, obviously, than the predecessor. Uh, so we're looking at 4 nanometer TSMC, which is the same as the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 as well, but it has some clocked. Uh, the, the way that they've arranged the cores, the Cortex and stuff like that is a lot different to uh, what we had before. So we're talking at uh, one Cortex X4 at 3.3 gigahertz. Then we have a three, we have three Cortex A720 at 3.5 uh, gigahertz. Then we have two Cortex A720 at 2.96 gigahertz clocked. And 
two times, uh, so two Cortex A5 20 2.2 gigahertz, and the graphics Adreno 750 uh, processors in there. With this one, there's also an extra chip that supports that gaming, uh, so you can get the fast refresh rate on this, which is something that IQ or Vivo, who owns this brand, have included in IQ12. Uh, Elsewhere, we have 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5X RAM. Uh, you can expand the RAM as well using the when you use the storage uh, that's it built in, you can sort of share some of the RAM uh, usage as well. So if you wanna, if you need it, you can do so. You have um, 120 watts flash charge in the box. You have 512 gigabytes of UFS 4.0 storage in here, which should help with read and write speeds. And for the battery, you have a big 5,000 milliamp hour battery. So it's a dual cell battery. So this will last you a whole day and then some. The well, operating system is running FunTouch OS 14, which is based on Android OS 14. So things runs very fluid and, and very smooth on here. It comes with some bloatware, so some apps that you probably don't want or need. It comes with a few of those. So if you run through the settings and see what we actually get in the phone as well. So we have things like your network settings, Bluetooth settings, but if you go into display and brightness settings, we have adaptive uh, brightness. I'm just gonna turn that off for a minute so that it doesn't keep going up and down for this video. Got dark theme on there, screen timeouts and all that kind of stuff. And then we can go into screen refresh, which is where you can select different modes. You've got smart switch, you've got standard, uh, which is 60 hertz of standard, or you can go all the way to that high one at 144 hertz refresh. But I tend to just stick to smart switch because I trust the device to select the right refresh rate for whatever I'm doing on the device. You then have things like your enhanced display effects. So you can have ultra HD, you can also have dynamic comp uh, compensation, which uses things like AI and stuff like that to make sure that the video that you're watching comes out the best in terms of the colors, the, the visual quality, and also just the motion and the fluidity as well. If you go in sound settings, we have stuff like your audio super resolution. So you can have uh, audio super resolution automatically optimizes and improves the sound quality of low quality audio in video and audio files, enabling this feature will increase system power consumption. So yeah, let's enable it because we do have a big 5,000 milliamp hour battery in there and 120 watts flash charge to charge this back up. So that would not be an issue. You've got super audio as well. So things like use AI to respond to things. You've got movies, games, and music modes, but use AI, that means the device would know what environment you're in. Uh, so it would automatically tune the sound accordingly. For those gamers out there, there's a gaming menu. So ultra game mode. Uh, so the sidebar will come up so you can select different uh, options whilst you're gaming. You have eSports mode, off-screen autoplay, game display announcements, and gamer uh, game super resolution, 4D game vibration. You've got all these settings that you can play with. So when you start gaming, it would work accordingly. If you go to about phone, I always like that about phone because it tells you a bit more about your device. So 16 gigabytes of RAM there, 512 gigabytes of internal storage, Android 14 tells you the uh, the clock speed, 8 Gen 3 uh, for mobile platform there. So it's all there if you just want to check your settings or if you're on the phone to customer service and they want to know what you've got, all the information you need will be there for you. Let's go into the camera and see what we have in the camera as well. So uh, here we have different options available. So right at the bottom, we can go ultra wide 0 0.6. We've got one times uh, there, we've got two times, three times uh, digital zoom, and then you can go all the way to 10 times here. But you can also go all the way to that 100 times sort of high <laughs> hyper zoom there. So there's loads of options there to really get good quality photo when, when out and about on the go. If we tap up top there, you get different color styles as well. It's got vivid, uh, textured, and natural, so you can select different options if you like. So you can select textured, things look a bit more grainier. Got natural, just to natural color tones, and vivid to make things look a bit more puppy, and like just it just pops and warmth and all that stuff. So that's probably good for social media without having to do any extra edits. And if you go to video, uh, we have options for 8K, so you can shoot 8K at up to 30 frames per second, which is impressive. And then you can change the default as well from whatever you want to shoot. And then this, this menu on here, so, so on there you can do one times, two times. Uh, if you get 4K, you can do up to three times in terms of the video mode. But 8K at 30 frames drops you down to just a one times and a two times. So uh, bear that in mind. Uh, 1080p allows you to shoot across the, the super wide, one times, two times, and three times if you want to shoot. Uh, in those uh, resolutions. So yeah, so you've got options there to shoot all those different resolution mo and modes and stuff like that. So that's really good. There's also other modes on here as well, like snapshots. You've got night uh, photography as well, which you can shoot across all the focal length as well. You've got portrait mode, uh, as we used to see on most smartphones these days. So you've got professional portraits there, so you can select different things. You've got normal photo mode, like we said already. And in settings, we can see what options we have. We have things like your aspect ratio, HDR, level meter, watermark and all that stuff that you get uh, usually on these phones these days. Going back to video, you can also change the bokeh effect. So if we select this little F stop thing here, we can change the bokeh effect from F16 all the way down to F1.0 
uh, or you can turn it off completely just to think, keep things natural if you're not trying to have that blurry background effect at all. In video, you can also go into settings. So I was saying there's something else <laughs> before I digress. If you go to settings, you can go to movie there, which then puts things into this sort of like landscape. Let me just flip it around. You can see the bar ever so slightly on top and the bottom there. So you can go into that movie format where it gives you that letterbox effect. So I don't know it's going to use that, but if you're into your filming and stuff like that, that's something that you could actually use. And if you stick that into ultra wide, you get a lot more in your shots, which is incredible. So that was pretty much it on the camera front uh, in terms of just an overview of what you get when you buy one of these. Uh, but what I wanted to show though is because this is running running on the latest eight, uh, 8 Gen 3, I wanted to do some uh, benchmarking to, uh, on here as well to compare them to my S23 Ultra, which is running a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy. So hopefully this will show you some sort of difference in what to expect when you get something like this. So there we go. So on the left, we have the 8 Gen 3, which has 2163 on the single score and uh, single core score and versus 2070 on the 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy. And so you can see there that you do get some improvements in terms of numbers there. So again, do with that what you will. It's, it's just something to show you that this one's got extra power, extra oomph compared to the 8 Gen 2. Uh, so, but I'll put that to the side and just show you some gaming on here as well. So we've got, I've been running loads of games on here. So I've been playing um, Genshin uh, Impact, which works really well. So just running Genshin Impact here, just run really smoothly, very, very good as well. There's no problems here. And then sliding on the left side here, you can change the settings here. So you've got monster mode, uh, which basically means everything's running at full whack. But in the real world, in terms of performance, I think it runs things very smoothly. So this is Genshin Impact running on here at the moment. The colors are great. Everything looks fantastic in terms of uh, how fluid it is. There's no issues there at all. It just, it's very responsive. So I have no issues there at all. And then I've been playing some uh, racing games as well. So that works as well. So again, the whole thing with benchmarking scores in the real world here, I think you're going to get similar experiences on the 8 2 and 8 3 until we start to get all this AI features and all this Agent 3 specific features and applications being developed so we can actually experience those extra features that we can have uh, on these devices. But there you have it. I think it's a good device. Uh, if you want to know more about it, feel free to drop me a question uh, in the comments below. Uh, but in the meantime, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.